Today we are in part five. Then we're going to wrap up our series called Flip the Script. And as we've been going through the series, the key tagline has been the scripts we tell ourselves determine the story of our lives. The scripts we tell ourselves over and over and over and over will go on to define the story of our lives. And we've just each week identified it a destructive script at the start and turn that into a constructive script. We've identified something unhealthy and said, hey, what is a more healthy approach we can take? And Mike would take that tape and turn it over. We want to flip that script so we can take something that's unhealthy and make it healthy. And today's script I've just titled The Superstar. And the superstar script is this, it's all about me. It's the person that's just saying, hey, everything in life's about me. I want to spend my life, my time, everything that I've got to build my kingdom. And today, um, in order to help us see someone who lives out this script is um, the King Herod. And let me take you to a quick passage in Acts 12 where we can learn a little bit about Herod. Here's what it says. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not of a man. See, Herod was speaking. He had all the might. He had all the power. And so when he gave this public address, people were thinking, wow, this is the voice of a God, not of a man. See, in Herod's eyes, it was all about him and all about his kingdom, about him getting power, about him having control, him having everything. And the crowd played up to it and said, this is the voice of a God, not a man. So what happens? Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and Herod died. See, here we have Herod in this place. He's got people believing that he is in fact a God, not simply a man. He plays up to it and so God, in the way that only he can, strikes him down. So he dies to prove really that Herod isn't in fact a God. He is just a man. But this is the challenge that you and I take on board when we adopt the superstar script that it's all about me. We position ourselves as God. And when we do that, what we start to expect is that everyone else is there to serve us because it's all about us. It's all about me and it's all about my kingdom. And if I'm building my kingdom and I'm the king who's large and in charge, you too should be building my kingdom. And that's the underlying script that it's all about me. In fact, some of us have got this script so deeply embedded in who we are that rather than looking to God and letting who God is shape our identity, we look at who we are and we try to shape God's identity as an image of us. In fact, I've heard it said this way before and it resonated so powerfully with me. If you and God don't disagree on things from time to time, you're not becoming more like God, but you're making God more like you. The reality is God is God and we are people. And it is so easy for us to fall into this unhealthy script, this destructive script of saying, no, 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 it's all about me. You see, I'd say it this way. You know you're a superstar when you're simply focused on building your kingdom. When you've got that tunnel vision and it's all about building my kingdom. It's all about my name and what I can get and what I can control and what I can manipulate and what I've got in my kingdom. So you know you're a superstar when it's all about building your kingdom. So you, you know you're building your kingdom when you say things like this, I want the accolades, I want the attention, I want the position, I want the prestige, I want the glory, I want all the gold, I want the rewards, I want the recognition, I want the control, I want the credit, I want the sovereignty, I want the authority. You see, you, you know you're living up to the superstar script when you're going through life trying to make things happen in this way, so you get the accolades or the attention. So you get the position and the prestige. But when you're, you're trying to just, man, it becomes all about me. And, and you've seen this play out in your life, right? Because this is just the reality. And this is what's so remarkable about this series and looking at these different scripts is we can see these scripts play out in our life consistently over and over and over and over. And we can see them play out in other people's lives. And 
It's very easy to, to point fingers again at others and say, hey man, I know him, I know her. They fit into this script. But the reality is, I think, is these scripts all affect us in some way, shape, form or another. And so when it comes to the superstar script, what is it that you're wanting? When do you think you're the superstar? Is it because you want the attention? Is it because you want prestige or glory? Is it because you want gold and, and money or recognition and sovereignty? Well, what is it? That drives you because sometimes we all find ourselves saying this script. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. But here's the kicker. What if we flip the script? What if we no longer say that it's all about me? What is a much more healthy script for us to adopt? I'd suggest this. It's all about him. It's all about God. In fact, we're not called to be the king because they're already is a king. We're not called to be the superstar because there already is a God who is way greater than us. If we can take the script and say, no, it's, it's not about me, rather it's all about him, we position ourselves to live a life that we're proud of, for our life to become a story that we're proud to tell and that others will tell for generations. I've labeled the script, the servant. This is the script of the servant. This is someone who says, no, no, it's not about me. It's all about him. I'm here to serve. I'm going to serve him and his purposes in the world. In fact, when we have the script, it's all about him. It actually generally becomes all about other people. Why? Because we love an invisible God by loving visible people. So if we're living a life, we would say, man, the statement of our life, the script that we want to hold on to is it's all about him. What that really is going to mean that we're going to live a life that's all about serving the people that are around us. And to look at this example, I want us to look at Paul. This is also in Acts, Acts 14 this time. And just contrast this response with Herod's response. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, Paul and Barnabas had been there speaking and someone had been miraculously healed. Okay? So someone had been miraculously healed. The crowd had saw this. They went wild, calling out in their Lyconian dialect. The gods have come down. These men are gods. They called Barabbas, Zeus, not Barabbas, Barnabas, Zeus, and they called Paul Hermes, since Paul did most of the speaking. The priest of the local Zeus shrine got up a parade Bulls and banners and people lined right up to the gates ready for the ritual of sacrifice. So again, we have a crowd looking this time at Paul and Barnabas saying, You are gods. You are gods. Just like here. So this is the voice of a god, not a man. These people were believing that Paul and Barnabas were gods. But look at what Paul and Barnabas do. When Paul and Barnabas finally realized what was going on, that they might have been a little bit slow to the party, judging this, they stopped the crowd. Waving their arms, they interrupted the parade, calling out. What do you think you're doing? We're not gods. We are men just like you. Here, Paul and Barnabas are making it very clear. No, 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 no. We're not gods. It's not about us. It's all about that God. It is only one God, a God, and it's all about him. Why? Because we're here to bring you the message, to persuade you to abandon these silly God superstitions and embrace God himself, the living God. We don't make God. He makes us. And all of this, the sky, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. See, here we have Paul and Barnabas really playing the role of the servant, adopting the script. We're not gods. We know we're in a position where people were literally worshipping them, where people wanted to bring sacrifices to them, where people wanted to elevate their status above the level of humanity, above the level of everyone else, and say, you guys are gods. They said, no, 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 we're not gods. Why? Because they refused to buy into the script that it's all about me. How easy would it have been for Paul and Barnabas to grab hold of the script that's all about me and said, hey, look at the power we're getting, look at the prestige, look at, look at all, the, all the gold, look at the glory that's being put upon us, look at all the opportunity, we're going to have, have um, like the authority here, we're going to have so much, but they said, no, 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 we're not gods, we're merely men, just like you, we're all the same. I said, no, no, it's, it's not about us. It's all about him. And let me tell you about him. Because if it's all about him, I'm going to use my life to tell you about him. And how great 
and how remarkable and how special he is because he is the one that created everything the heavens and the earth, the skies, and all of that that we just saw Paul and Barnabas telling the crowd when they were trying to elevate Paul and Barnabas to the position of gods. And they said, no, no, no. And they climbed down and said, no, we're just, we just men. We are here to serve. And I'll tell you what. This is, I believe, of all the scripts I've looked at, the most fundamental. In fact, I believe the only way we can really continue to flip all the scripts that we've talked about in weeks one to four is when we let this script come through the strongest. When this script comes through and underpins everything else, when we first say, no, no, I am a servant and it is all about him. And some of you might be saying, well, Clint, why didn't you begin with the script? If this is the key script, if this is the one that underpins the other scripts, wouldn't this have been the script to start with? And I'll tell you the reason I wanted to say this one to last rather than begin with it. Because as we went through all the other scripts, everyone leaned in. When we first talked about the finger pointer, and said, your finger pointer said, you did this to me. So now we're going to flip that script. We're going to say, no, this happened to me, but I'm not going to let it define me. People are like, yeah, I want that second script. But, but the only way we can get to a place, where we're not pointing fingers at others and rather we're that overcomer that says, hey, this might have happened to me, but I'm not going to let it define me, is when we understand that, that the script's not there to serve us, but it's to serve a purpose bigger than us. And if we're not going to let it define us, we're going to overcome it so that other people too can overcome things in the world. Why? Because it's all about him. And the second we looked at the avoider. The avoid would say, it's not my responsibility and move on. It's not my responsibility and move on. But the activist, the activist would say this, this may not be my responsibility, but I can always do good. Why can you always do good? Because it's not about me. It's all about him. Doing good is going to cost me. Doing good isn't easy. If doing good was easy, we wouldn't grow weary. But we do. Why? Because it's hard to always do good. But why are we going to always do good? Because it's all about him. Um, the, the third we looked at the martyr and the martyr would say I'm the only one I'm the only one that would walk around with the chip on their shoulder and the, the doom and gloom of life I'm the only one trying I'm the only one passionate enough remember but we flipped that and we turned it to the pioneer and the pioneer would say we're forging a new path why are you forging a new path because it's all about him and he's calling us to forge a new path to set something up for those that are coming behind us see this script underpins everything last week we talked about the taker the taker and the taker would say i deserve this i deserve this i deserve this and they'll take something that isn't theirs to take because in their head they believe they deserve it but a better script is that of someone who is called and the called would say i'm called to something greater i'm called to serve him why because it's all about him so when we've got this script that says it's all about him it positions us to flip all of those other scripts all of those other scripts are ones that you want and i want and we all want no matter where we are on our spiritual journey and that's why it's so fundamental that we have to understand that what underpins those scripts is this script and the reality that it's all about him because otherwise i'm going to flip those other scripts occasionally now while i think life's all about me if it's all about me and my kingdom and what i can accumulate and what i can get and how much power i can develop and how much things i can control I'm only going to be able to flip those scripts occasionally. I'm going to revert back to the unhealthy, to the destructive ones. But while I can go through life with this fundamental script that it's all about him, it is so much easier to flip those scripts because all of those scripts start off with it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. I deserve this. Why? Because it's all about me. It's not my responsibility because life's about me and I've got to do what's easy. You you did this to me. Why? Because everything's about me. Um, I'm the only one, yeah, because everything's about me. But the inverse is also true. Then when we understand that life's all about him, we can see how all of these scripts make such a profound difference when we realize that life isn't simply about us and our kingdom, but it's about God and his kingdom. I wonder if this is why when Jesus prayed the Lord's Prayer, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hey God, your kingdom here, your will here, not my will, not my kingdom. The challenge that, that many of us can sometimes have when, when it comes to prayer is we, we pray with our mouth, God, your will, God, your kingdom, but our life says my will and our life says my kingdom. And we have this script. It's all about him. It really is all about his will and it really is all about his kingdom. When it comes to your life, are you living your life? 
to build your kingdom or to build his? Are you really pursuing what it is that you want in your will or are you willing to lay aside your will and say, okay, I want to serve your will? See so again in Acts 20, we see Paul talk about this. And if you remember, if you're with us right at the beginning of this year, we did a short series on Acts 2022, right? Because we're going into 2022. And we, we looked at this in detail. But again, let me bring you back to it right here, right now, because this passage underpins this whole idea that it's all about him. Here we have Paul making this decision to go to Jerusalem. He says, and now compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. You can say, this isn't about him. Because he, he doesn't know what's going to happen to him there. He knows that he's going to face prison and hardships. It can't be about him if he's willing to step into hardships. If he's willing to step into a place where he's going to end up in prison. And he explains why. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim, my only goal is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. It's not about me. It's all about him. It's not about my will and my kingdom. No, it's all about his will and his kingdom. And so all I want to do with my life is use it to further his kingdom, to step into the will that he has got for me, no matter what it costs me. Why? Because it's all about him. This is such an important script. It's all about him. It's all about him. If you want to be able to live out all those other scripts that you've lent into each week and during this series, the only way you're going to be able to hold on to those scripts, those good scripts, the ones that are going to allow you to live the life you want to live, is when we can first say it's all about him, because otherwise it's going to be about us, and it's very, very hard to keep flipping those scripts when life is all about us. So in John uh, 3, we have a quote here from John the Baptist, and this is what John the Baptist, when he's confronted, when he's talking about what he's doing, he says this, he says, he, talking about Jesus, he must become greater, I must become less. He must become greater. I must become less. If most of us are the opposite, right? I must become greater. But no, John the Baptist says, no, no, no. He must become greater. In order for him to become greater, I must become less. You see, it's not about me. It's all about him. It's not about Clint. It's all about Jesus. It's not about me. It's all about him. And so many of us, we miss out on the life that we were called to live, that we were created to live. We miss out on telling the story that we were created to tell because we put ourselves at the center of the story rather than saying, no, 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 no. It's not about me. It's all about him. And we put him at the center. We find that others move into the center and we live our life to serve those that are around us. And there's only when we really start to serve those that are around us and we give our life away. We find the reality and the truth and what Jesus said. It's only when you lay down your life that you truly find life. See, I'll, I'll put it this way. Let's contrast superstars and heroes for a moment. I'd say that, that true heroes are firstly servants. That true heroes, true heroes, people that we admire, people of courage, people of valor, people that we look up to, be like, whoa, she's a hero, he's a hero, that group, man, they're heroes. I'd say that true heroes are firstly servants, that you can never be a hero without first being a servant, that you've got to serve and then become a hero. See, if you think of, of, of characters on, on movies or, or books, and you think of, of um, goodies and baddies, right, all the heroes and the villains. What is it that differentiates the heroes from the villains, the goodies from the baddies? It's, it's, it's not how strong they are, because sometimes the villains and the baddies are stronger than the heroes. It, it's not how good looking they are, how sexy they are, because sometimes the villains look just as good, if not better than the heroes. It's not about how much they've got, because again, sometimes the villains have got a whole lot more than the heroes. But the key question the key 
determinant factor about what distinguishes, what differentiates the heroes from the villains and stories and movies and all of that stuff that we love is simply this. Who are they serving? Who are they serving? See, in every story, in every movie, the hero is always serving the people that are around them. And the villain is generally always looking after themselves. The hero is often showing courage and great personal risk without really having any reward. And yet the villain, they still might be taking risks. They still might be showing a level of courage, but it's always about building their name and building their kingdom and getting what they can get. You see, what differentiates true heroes from villains really is who they are serving. You just, just think, think of me for a moment. Think of some of your favorite stories. Think of some of your favorite movies, some of your favorite characters, and what makes them so appealing? What makes them so exciting? What is it about them that makes them stand out to you? It's simply this. Honestly, it is. It's the fact that they are serving others and not themselves. And then think of the opposite. Think of some of the villains from some of those stories. Think of some of the, the bad characters, the ones that you shout the ones you go, oh, I hope I'm never like you, oh, I hope I'm never like him. And those are the people that are always serving themselves. You see, true heroes are firstly servants. True heroes understand that their responsibility, their call, is to serve other people. And as they go about serving other people, they start to tell a story that positions them as a hero in the eyes of others. So they don't seek to be heroes, they seek to be servants. And through serving those that they can serve, the story gets elevated to the point where they become heroes and people want to talk about them and people start to look at them. But the true hero never goes out looking to be a hero. No, 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 no. The true hero goes out looking to be a servant. You know, it's true, don't you? So we've got to flip the script. We've got to flip the script. We don't want to say it's all about me. We want to say, no, it's all about him. I'm going to use my life to serve those that are around me. I'm going to use my life to serve whoever I can because that's what God created you to do. That's what he created me to do. So remember one day Jesus was, was with a couple of his disciples and the disciples come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. We want to sit at your left. We want to sit at your right. They're saying, we want to be the superstars of your kingdom. And Jesus says, hey, if, if you want to be great, you've got to be a servant to all. So Jesus was saying, if you want to have a story that's elevated to the status of hero, if you want to be great, it's not about positioning yourself. It's not about climbing the ladder. It's not about asking for position or prestige. It's all about serving. And what was Jesus above everything else? He was a servant. And so he would say, the Son of Man, I came not to be served, but to serve. And what did Jesus do with his life? He served humanity. He went to the cross and he paid the ultimate price, death on a cross. Why? So that every human could then have a relationship with God. And Jesus served humanity by going to the cross. And he has been elevated. See, Jesus didn't live a life that says it's all about me. And he says, no, it's all, it's all about him. It's all about God. It's all about other people. So I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to surrender my life. I'm going to give up my life because I want to serve people. And I'll tell you what, it is when we lay down our life, when we surrender our life, when we surrender our will and say, no, no, I'm here to serve those that are around me. We have a life that becomes a story that's worth telling. See, I know that you were created to live a life that becomes a story 
that's worth telling. That one day future generations can sit around a campfire and they can tell stories about your life, not because you set out to be a superstar, but because you set out to serve. And as you serve the people that are around you, your story got elevated and you made a profound and you made a powerful difference, not because you wanted to be a superstar, but because you were willing to say, man, I'm here to serve. You can think about, think about some of the people that are the most celebrated people in the world. And I'll tell you what, they are all servants. I'm not talking about people with fame because people can get fame for a lot of things. But I'm thinking about the, the stories that we want to tell our kids. And we say, when you get older, I want you to be like him. I, 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 I dream that you'll be like her. I want you to think about those people. People like Martin Luther King Jr. Or Martin Luther King himself. You might think of Mother Teresa or Rosa Parks. This list can just go on and on and on and on, right, of, of those incredible people. But what they all have in common is the fact that they use their life to serve others. They say, hey, it's, it's not about me. It's all about him. It's not about getting people to serve me. It's actually using my life to serve those that are around me. And I'll tell you what, when we get some of these stories, we're going to get passed intergenerationally. But you know what? There are other heroes out there whose names we don't know. That single mum that goes above and beyond doing all she possibly can to forge a new path for her kids, who works tirelessly, who even when she's feeling emotionally drained, still turns up emotionally present for her kids, who does all she possibly can for the neighbors that are around who just saying, how can I serve, how can I serve, how can I serve? And maybe no one else will know her name, but, but one day, to those that matter most, they'll tell her story. And they'll celebrate her as a hero because she told herself a script that determined the story of her life. And the script that she told herself was, it's not about me, it's all about him. And it's only when we can tell ourselves the script. It's not about me. It's all about him. That we can position ourselves to lean into and grab hold of all of those other positive scripts that we've talked about over the last four weeks. And I know, I know, you want those scripts in your life. You want those scripts to tell the story of your life. But if you're going to tell them over and over and over and over, you need to grab hold of this script. This is not, it's not about me. It's all about him. Are you going to live up to the life that you were created to live? Is your story going to rise the way that it was destined to rise because you are willing to go low and to serve those that are around you? Because remember, what differentiates heroes from superstars is who they serve.